Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we are continuing to fire on all cylinders here on the Levi Clay YouTube channel. We are back for another live stream. As I have said, or as I said last month, I'm upping the amount of streams that I'm doing. I'm doing two a month now. We'll be streaming alternate weekends, doing a live transcription, uh, obviously with the intention of helping you to learn to play like a particular player or get in the mindset of a particular player. But at its core, the idea here is very simple. I'm a professional transcriber. I would love it if you guys develop some of the skills that you need in order to be able to transcribe music. It's a wonderful skill for helping you learn music. It's a wonderful skill for this. But of course, it's also a wonderful skill for a professional musician, for a working musician. Being able to put yourself in a position where you are able to, uh, you know, transcribe other artists music for them that's a big part of how i've made my living it's a big part of how i bought my house right so transcription has always been very near and dear to my heart it's an incredibly useful skill and i do acknowledge that a lot of the stuff that i transcribe here on youtube is very high level stuff um because i want to show you you know things that are interesting to me uh and i often neglect some of the easier stuff and i want you all to know that transcription you can't get into transcription at a high level right you have to start low and build up I want you to be able to see that anything's possible, but I think it's also important to know that anything is achievable. So if you work from that ground level and build up those skills over time, you are going to be able to transcribe like me. I wasn't born with any particular set of skills. You know, I've worked and developed all of these skills. You're more than capable of learning all of these skills. You're more than capable of developing these skills. So why not give it a go? Uh, this was actually requested by one of my patrons. This is requested by Phil. I feel specifically asked for this particular track. I'm actually doing a bunch more content over on Patreon. If you hadn't seen, I'm doing my weekly guided practice sessions. These go up every Tuesday. I'm now doing a weekly guided ear training session. This goes up every Wednesday. So you are getting now uh, two live transcription streams a month, four weekly guided practice sessions, two, uh, sorry, four weekly guided ear training sessions, plus guitar souls every Monday. I'm making a lot of content. You should go and check it out. You will enjoy it. In fact, speaking of which, here's some wonderful people scrolling on screen now that do those things. They support the channel and it's all very much appreciated. Uh, enables you to, you can get lots of things actually. You can get uh, private lessons with me. <laughs> You know, those, those are always good. Or you can just hang out in some of our groups, talk about music, learn about music, all of that good stuff. If that doesn't suit, you can also head on over to Amazon, check out one of my books. There are many available. I'm sure you will find one that you enjoy. Right. There's that out of the way. Hello, Leon. How's it going, brother? Speaking of one of my patrons, how's it going, Leon? Uh, hopefully none of my new patrons uh, are watching this stream because I need to update that credits list and there's about 10 more names I need to put on that. So, um, yikes. I'll get around to it though, don't worry, I'll absolutely, I'll do that over the coming days. I was a little bit underprepared for this stream, if I'm completely honest with you. I lost track of the days. I thought that I was streaming tomorrow because I think it's Saturday. It's not Saturday, it's Sunday. <laughs> I realised this at quarter past nine when I was in my car driving to the supermarket. So I got to the supermarket at 9.30 and was like, huh, I need to just pick up a loaf of bread, turn around immediately, drive home as fast as I can and put this stream on. So here we go. I have done all of that. I made a thumbnail and, you know, downloaded the video that I need to do. I've even marked it out. So should we crack on with this transcription? It's going to be fun. Uh, screen and face. Boom. So what I have here, as usual, is um, Guitar Pro on the right. I'll be using this for notation and I have uh transcribe the software on the left i have loaded in the video into transcribe so when i hit play you're going to be able to see that video playing in transcribe get the idea I'm able to loop things I could slow things down nice and easy uh, and of course I can notate stuff so one of the oh see a guitarist what have we got here in my mind this is a Levi Clay antidote to the Canning Bay Play Blues gotta love the Three Kings yeah Dining Out on Freddie King BB King licks for years they're still valid absolutely valid yeah uh, of course the Three Kings you, you miss out Albert there um, you mentioned Three Kings but obviously you didn't mention um, Albert 
I go between these three time and time again, uh, which one's my favourite. And, you know, they are all that good. They are all easily considerable, uh, easy to consider them some of the greatest blues players that have ever lived. And they all have very unique voices. I mean, obviously not unique now, you know, 50 years on, because everyone's stolen all their licks. But for the time, if you listen to them compared to their peers, they had unique voices. They sounded very unique. And um, I go between which one is my is my favourite uh Often, you know, I think of BB King as the uh, the man that can say so much with so little. Uh, a man who who was really about playing the space over playing the notes, which is cool. Um, then you think of you think of Albert King, just the master of those bends. He was a very expressive player that did a lot of cool string bending ideas. Uh, you know, partially helped by he was he was often tuned down very low, right, and had slack strings on the guitar, so it was easy for him to do these wild bends. But you know, trademark part of his sound. And then Freddie, of course, uh, Freddie. I off, more often than not, I go for Freddie as being my favourite. And the reason I say that is because I think there's a little bit more blues rock, uh, dare I even say jazz, <laughs> in Freddie's playing. Um, yeah, something about his playing really speaks to me, so it should be fun. Richard Henry, how's it going, brother? Hope you're well. Long time no speak. I mean, it's been like two weeks. <laughs> um, but I, I hope you will. Yeah, cool. So um, the first comment that I should should uh, make on this, and this really shows you the, the types of players that, that I'm looking to help with the Patreon thing, right? So when Phil reached out to me and asked about me transcribing this, wanted me to look at something a little bit more simple, one of the first things he said was, also, I think it's worth noting that this song is usually played in C. But it doesn't sound like this is being played in C, so I assume that there are. Uh, sorry, I just I read a comment and, and got confused there. Um, <laughs> so he said, I assume there's some sort of speed issue going on with the recording, uh, because I assume this was played in C, and maybe you you'll need to pitch shift it when transcribing it. And one of the first things to point out when we're doing a transcription like this is we've got video, so we can see where Freddie is playing on the guitar. We can see. Right here, we can see that his his fingers are placed around the you know the twelfth fret, twelfth fret, fret marker, and the fourteenth fret. Uh, as he continues on, you can see that he's down around that ninth fret area of the guitar. That would be C sharp. So he th this is played in C sharp. He's he's playing the playing this in the key of C sharp. There's also a couple of clips later on where you see the keyboard player, and the keyboard player is very much playing up on the black keys more so than down on the white keys, which again would say to me C sharp rather than rather than C. So very definitely um, this is played and, and done in C-sharp. And I take stuff like this for granted, being able to identify stuff like this. If you're new to transcribing, you know, take think about this. Just take these tips. You have access to the video. How might we be able to work out what tuning someone is playing in? How might we be able to work out what key someone is playing in? Um, and the video is a great way of doing that, you know, being able to work out the tuning by saying, oh, okay, so he's playing at the fifth fret there, and I can see that he's playing the low E string at the fifth fret, but it do it's not an A note, so that string must be tuned to something else. Um, so using, you know, using technology to your advantage is great. There we go, speak of the devil. How's it going, Phil? Hope you enjoy this, bud. Um, okay, right, let's take a look at this. So, solo starts here. Uh, it's full speed. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my usual, mark it out, four beats per bar, because of course there are four beats per bar. Now I can see very clearly. I want to be clear when I say I can see very clearly. Transcribing is not about using the eyes. He says as he stretches his eyeball out. I can see very clearly where each beat is, which means it, it's very easy for me to highlight, say, beats two and, uh, sorry, three and four. I mean, I'm a little bit... The markers are out. There we go. So I can highlight those very clearly. What I don't mean when I say I can see is that you should never use your eyes in order to be, in order to look up here and see where a note falls in relation to the beat. That's something that we should be hearing, okay? Uh, I'm going to say the same thing that I always say when I'm transcribing something like this. The goal here is to be able to internalize the sound, so we hear the thing that somebody plays, and then we find the thing on the guitar. You don't, and, and sorry, I should be clearer when I say that, we hear phrases that people play, not notes. We're not interested in doing this, right? Which is how I started transcribing. We don't want to go... You know, you could do that and go, what is that note? 
and you're going to have a bad time if you do that, okay? We're looking for the phrase. When we listen to this, we can hear that it starts on beat three. One, two, three. Bo -bum, ba -dum, bo -ba -dum. One, two, three. Ba -ba -ba. Ba -ba -ba. See how I vocalized that phrase already? One, two, three. Ba -ba -ba. Ba -ba -ba. Ba -ba -ba. That's really important because now I can start notating this. It doesn't. It, there's no notes played in beat one. There's no notes played in beat two. There's a note played in beat three, but it's not on the first beat of beat three. It's three. Ba -ba -ba. Ba -ba -ba. There's a sixteenth note rest followed by. Nope. Uh, put a key signature in on this. This is all nerdy stuff that isn't necessary for a transcription. So now when I look at this, one, two, three, ba ba ba. You could listen to that and go, uh, no, it is, no, what, uh, what would that second note be? Oh, both notes, yeah. Like this, P playing a double stop there. But from the from a perspective of repeatable vocabulary, things that you can steal from people, this is a nice piece of vocabulary. This is the pickup beat leading into the solo. So. Okay, super simple bar, right? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, so just that first note on the first beat one two three four bend two three four now we know where that's going to be based on the pentatonic pattern that we've just played uh i'm going to notate it as a blues curl which i'm going to do like this putting the note in uh then Pressing B for bend and then putting uh, bend in and then just adjusting the arrows to get it how I want it to be. I don't want the default, which would be this. That would be a full step bend, starting there and immediately bending up. We don't want that. We want a curl, which would be the note bending up at the end. But we want it to start bending up later on through the life of the note. You could be pedantic and say he's bending that upper semitone. I'm not going to argue with you. I'm okay with that. I'm not worried about MIDI. I don't want my MIDI. I mean, I want my MIDI to sound great, right? But it's not the, the most important thing. So that's our first phrase. Now I'm going to quantize this just a little bit. We've listened to the phrase a few times. Can you go? Ba da bo da da ba 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 bo da ba 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 bo da ba 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 da ba 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 da ba ba. You know, I haven't practiced this before, and I didn't learn this solo first, right? That's the skill that we're looking to develop. In fact, tune in Wednesdays on Patreon for my weekly guided ear training sessions. Um, for my $10 guys, we're going to be working on developing these skills. Really, that's a skill in its own right. Being able to hear that phrase. And that's really important because now, now I've got that phrase internalized. I know I can hear where it falls in relation to the beat because it's no use going. Those are the notes, but rhythm is so important. The context of the rhythm is so important. So I need to know that this starts on the end of beat one. One and th uh, three and one and three, three and four and ba. Ba, ba, da, ba. So if I write that in, starting on the end, second eighth note of beat one. Holds that bend in beat two. Up, uh. 
Again, blues curl on this. Now, uh, ba ba, I'm going to turn my amp on. Ba ba, same again. So we're going to go. Um, now I want to analyze these. So. This is going to, you know, to, to some people it may seem silly. Let me just grab my Telecaster two seconds. Do we want a Telecaster or do we want a different guitar? You request. <laughs> oh, I'm going to need this. I'm trying to make these transcription st streams a little bit more, you know, playing in them as well. There we go. Nearly that. So, um, Uh, so if I do this, uh, guitar and face, there we go. Cool. So here's the telly. Uh, now, when I look at this phrase, there's two ways that we could study a phrase like this. We could play it free time. So there's two phrases, like I say. Uh, and in fact, let me bring them up like this. First phrase would be this. Okay. Finish that bar. And that'll annoy me. Finish this. Uh, sorry, work on this phrase. So if I zoom in on this phrase, let's do it like this. Like I say, first way to look at this would be free time. So just looking at the note placement, we know it's C sharp minor, so that ninth fret pentatonic box. Bad nonsense. <laughs> uh, we know that that's the area that this is gonna be played in. So when I look at this, well, what do we have? We have the ninth fret on the B string the 9th fret on the high E string. Then we're sliding from the 12th fret on the B up to the 14th fret. That would be the root note. And then bent going up to that 12th fret. So I'm not worried about timing whatsoever. I really want to get to grips with that. Um, there we go. We want to be able to play that anywhere, right? We want to be able to freely... I should check my guitar's coming through, shouldn't I? Yeah. <laughs> so this would be the notes. Now, if we worry about the rhythm that's actually being played, it's one, two, three. Should check I'm in tune. Yep, cool. So now in theory, I should be able to bring Freddie in and I should be able to look at that lick and play it without hesitation. And the reason I like this is it highlights how blues, great blues players, in terms of lengths of lengths of phrase and things like that, great blues players phrase uh, in, in phrase length. So these are two, two bar phrases. It's not like he's going one, two, three, four. <laughs> Right notes help. That's not how blues players phrase, right? We're leaving space. One, two, three, four, down, bye, bye. One, 
One, two, three. We can nail it, right? Two. So that's our question phrase. And then his answer, if we look back at our transcription, is going to be bend up, because we're up in this 12 fret area now. Uh, now I'm playing the rhythm correct. If you just want to spend your time just worrying about what the notes are. And then we focus on that rhythm. Ba ba do ba 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 do ba 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 ba. Simple phrase, like really powerful pentatonic phrasing. Uh, and if we look at it on the fretboard, you know, just knowing that, and you're going to see a lot of this in Freddie's soloing. Uh, pentatonic shape one. Nines on this. So I tend to overbend them at the moment. I'm used to playing my uh, Howard Roberts, which has that one there, which has 13s on it. Now we've moved up to this 12th fret area. This would be pentatonic box two, minor pentatonic box two. carried away on that so now i should be able to confident again confidently that's the key with all of this stuff i should just be able to bring freddie up and play that four bars with accuracy i should be able to sing it before playing it right so if i hit play on this very strong More vibrato. So solid, right? It's it's we're not having to put a lot of detail into this stuff. This is simple vocabulary, this is how we learn it, this is how we understand it, this is how we master it. And I'm all about the mastery of things, right? Screen and face. Cool. Let's continue on. Another simple two bar phrase, right? And you could really look at this and go, here's a two bar thing. He just plays one idea in here. Let's it breathe. At the end, two bar phrase, let's it breathe. <laughs> Leaving space is a good thing, or at least, let me rephrase that. Leaving space is an integral part of getting the sound of blues players like this. So. Okay, so let's continue on with this phrase. I want to be accurate about it, right? So we zoom in. Ooh, what's going on here? Uh, I want to zoom in on this. There we go. Yeah, so this is a little bit more syncopated. Ba da da ba ba da ba ba da da ba ba da da ba da da. If we want to be accurate, uh, it's 
So we'll go, um, oh bastard, we'll do this. Again, so now I should be able to look at this phrase and go one, two, three, four, one. Nice and nice and simple, right? Yeah, I would put that on the and. Like this. You might be pedantic, you could put vibrato and things on here, because obviously this puts quite a lot of vibrato on, the, on these notes. We'll be really, you know, accurate about these things. Um, now I've got, f in my mind, I've got four phrases. Four phrases. And that um, encompasses the first part of this solo, right? Uh, I should be able to rewind to the start of the solo. And just at 50% speed, shouldn't be a problem. Definitely not at 50% speed. Space. Uh, let me read this. Finally, some old school blues. Thanks, Levi. You're very welcome. Uh, you know, guys, I'm happy to do the transcriptions that you want to see. But when I say what you want to see, I mean people that support the channel. Support me on Patreon. Tell me what you want me to do, and I'm always going to say yes. <laughs> Personally, I like these types of transcriptions best. Don't find much of the Fusion Shred Blues stuff applicable to my style. Love to steal as many Freddie King licks as possible. Well, really, I'm arming you with the skills here to be able to steal all the Freddie King licks on your own, right? <laughs> Okay, now, at speed. I messed that up. Let's go again. One, two, three. One, two, three. Two, three, four. myself up so you can see it uh nope there we go <laughs> okay not not earth-shatteringly complicated. Just not earth-shatteringly shatteringly complicated. 
if you wanted to talk about the complexity of it, I think the thing that you're, that you're talking about for complexity is how much, mi- and it's not really complexity, it's simplicity is really the point, right? How much mileage someone can get out of just one area, just a few notes. If this was me, it would be very tempting to, sorry, uh, be very tempting to after playing... You know, I want to move. I want to. I want to already want to start going elsewhere. And obviously, I'm just like I wouldn't play like that, but. The- <laughs> point is i'm playing a lot of notes there and at its core that's not how guys like freddie king played you say a lot with very little repeat the idea scott henderson's old ed went to the store thing that's what we've got here right let me deal with these spammers Bammers. just getting tons and tons of mileage out of that or taking the idea um that freddie has here where it's uh, uh leaving lots of space so simple phrase that lasts for two bars and has space at the end of it so going one two three four one two three two three space In fact, actually, the fun thing with this is I should be able to just... uh One, two... So if I just loop uh, literally from the recording... Space, right? Two, three, four. on this they feel too uh way too slack anyway let's plow on with the transcription so none of this is hard Okay, then we have one, two, three. Uh, one, two, three, four. Milk that bend. Holds it for half a beat. That's all the phrase is. Could it be any more simple than that, right? <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, same idea again. Holds it longer, more vibrato. Space. All the space in the world. Because space is cool. Next phrase. One, two, three, four, and. Bends it four times. He's going to eke this phrase out a bit longer. You could play around with the MIDI on this and have these bends accurate in terms of like how slow he bends up each note, etc. Uh, for my for my study, I don't think it's important. So. And then we've got this. Uh... This uh, with vibrato on all of it. Yeah, really wide, aggressive vibrato. I mean, actually, in the grand scheme of things, it's not that wide. Not compared to, like, Zach Wilde. It's quite a timid vibrato compared to someone like that. But for a blues player, yeah, it's quite a wide vibrato. <laughs> Uh, this is a weird one because it's it's like the band loses where the one is a little bit so if we work backwards from the end So we would have but, but. Oh. I'm working backwards from the end. You'll see this come together uh, and you'll see the mindset behind it. So I'm I'm gonna write it like this. This would be where the chord change happens, right? So if chord one um probably not a staccato on that actually. If this is all like a C-sharp chord. The four chord. Will be that F-sharp seven. And I would put that in because it is relevant, right? So this is... Um, oh, not C-sharp one. That's, that's not a thing. C-sharp seven. <laughs> And this would be a chord change going to F sharp seven. One, two, uh, ba, ba. Does 
Altså her. Is that a bend or a slow? I'm putting that as a slide. Lots of analysis here. Two seconds. Uh, uh, no. Come back to that. Let's look at this phrase. This is really interesting to me because C sharp hits here. And these are the sorts of, you know, analysis, analyses. This is the way I would analyze a, um, a fusion track, of course, or a jazz track. But at its core, earlier I made a wild accusation. I said, I like Freddie because Freddie's got a little bit of jazz in his playing. And we see that here because with this phrase, this phrase here, uh, he's hitting the changes just a little bit, just a little bit. But if we listen to, um, if we listen to C sharp seven, just playing minor pentatonic over it, standard blues fair, like we do that. Then this F sharp seven chord lands, and he sticks to that C sharp minor pentatonic sound. totally do that but then when it goes back to the c-sharp 7 he ends on this huh that eighth fret on the a string that's not in that c-sharp minor pentatonic why is he playing that is it maybe the third of the chord it absolutely is go into that c-sharp 7 that's the third of the chord. So when we play this, you know, minor pentatonic. F sharp seven. When I do that and hit this, the third of the C sharp chord, it helps to sound that chord coming back in. too many jazz notes now uh but yeah point is uh, he hit he hit that chord change there and that was nice i appreciate it well done freddy good lad you've highlighted why you're awesome wrong screen there we go right, so this is shifting over into the five chord now this is uh, interesting again uh, uh. Oh no, wrong, wrong button.
And he ends on uh, like a nine chord. Uh, okay, let's put the chords in on this. So we go from our. Uh, uh, here we go up to the five chord, which is going to be a G sharp seven. Going down to an F sharp seven. Back to the C sharp seven. Uh, uh, G G sharp 7 and then ending on that C sharp it's really annoying he's playing there but you get the idea so like I say this is interesting to me because over this G sharp 7 chord again for people that, that think of old school blues players like this as just oh one pentatonic box and done there's more to it than that there is just more to it than that you can't argue with it there's more to it than that let's look at let's look at this phrase so let's go to what he plays that's over a g sharp right Jab on that all day, right? Um, so when we hear him playing that, ba 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 da ba ba. Well, we know that all of his... Well, I'm glad you're enjoying it, Martin. We know that all of this pentatonic stuff, or we certainly think of all this pentatonic stuff as just being pentatonic shape one. This is C-sharp minor pentatonic. The first note he plays here is... 13th fret on the D string. That's not in that minor pentatonic scale. Same again, this uh, 11th fret on the E string, that's not in that pentatonic band. What is this? These notes are in the G sharp minor pentatonic scale.
Whoops. In fact, if I play this phrase, and then play G sharp minor pentatonic shape one, you should be able to hear those are the not the same notes. <laughs> I'm not playing the same phrase, but I'm playing from the same note pool. In fact, I could play and then play. So this phrase over the G sharp seven chord, he's changed scale there. He's playing the G sharp minor pentatonic over that. Um, not the not the scale I'd go for, not the jazziest scale, but definitely more jazzy than just playing C sharp minor pentatonic over everything. Now suddenly, if I'm playing a blues, I might go okay C sharp. Tell you what, let's bring up a blues. Let's bring up a backing track, uh, which is going to get this video claimed. But you know, who cares? Uh, let's go. One, uh, John Tuggle. I love John stuff. So yeah, let's go for uh, slow blues back in track in A from my friend John over at uh, Learning Guitar Now. If I hit play on this. It's my four chord. Try that that Freddie King idea. Same idea again, right? Five chord.
idea. Five chord. Um, now, obviously I overplayed, like, that's the fun of something like that, playing way more notes than I need to, um, but, sorry, two seconds, uh, there we go, right, so yeah, playing way too, more, too many notes, way more notes than I need to, but the focus is there in my mind, right, I was having fun and playing the normal things that I would do uh, on a real, real slow blues like that, but there was still a degree of wanting to work on the thing that I'd learned from doing this transcription. Yeah, and that was over a blues. Um, Freddie will often, not often, sorry, we've only got one example of it, but what Freddie did here was deliberately... <laughs> deliberately went to that minor pentatonic on the fifth. And this is just a mindset that I, I see all too often with my students just isn't there. They just think, oh, I can, it's a blues. I can just play the minor pentatonic scale. Just take one pattern and just play it over the whole thing. And you can try and you'll have a sound. But it won't sound like Freddie. It won't sound like Albert. It won't sound like BB. You've got to be in control. You know, when I do, I think BB, if, if I go... BB thing in terms of notes that I'm choosing to play but there's that awareness of chord progression at all times this is A this is D A E D A. in there somewhere <laughs> uh cool so that's going to be me for this evening guys one freddie king transcription for you uh, that intro solo you of course are going to be able to go on to my patreon page and download that i'll upload it tomorrow because i need to go and eat some dinner it's 11 o'clock and i've lost track of all existence this evening so gotta eat uh but lastly uh i would or oh, sorry 
I should probably say again, big thank you to all my wonderful supporters over on Patreon. If you want to get this transcription and all of my other transcriptions that I do for you guys, uh, you are able to do so by heading over on over to that link in the description. You can join us for our weekly guided practice routines. We do weekly guided ear training sessions and you just get to hang out in the Facebook groups, which is also fun too. Uh, head on over to Amazon, check out one of my many books available. There are lots there. I'm sure you will find something you enjoy. Thank you so much, so much for tuning into this stream. Uh, I hope Phil got something out of it. Uh, Levi, when you solo in the blues, do you focus on thinking of scales or arpeggios? Uh, I'm I'm uploading a video on scales or why you should never play scales, practice scales. Uh, when I played there, I, I couldn't possibly have been thinking scales, right? Because I'm playing too many notes that aren't in the scale. Uh, I'm thinking of the chord. I'm thinking of the sound of the chord and I'm out loud. Oh, fuck it. All right, I'll plug in. <laughs> you suckered me in. So if I'm playing over an A chord, I've got all of my sounds that exist around that chord sound. And you see I played all over the fretboard there and played the sound of A. I could play scale, but that sounds like this. And I could play arpeggio, and arpeggio sounds like this. But my playing doesn't sound like either of those, yeah? If I'm playing over a blues, I'll play this. Four chord D. When I'm doing that, it doesn't sound like I'm doing this. playing scale just and obviously i'm being deliberate i'm avoiding um playing anything even slightly rhythmic but at the same time i'm not playing this sorry doing that either um it's a combination of those two things yeah it's uh it's the sound of a and i know what a sounds like apparently i don't <laughs> try it again to the d
E. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hope you had a great time, guys. Uh, if you have any questions about this stuff, hit me up on Patreon. Just leave me a comment in the description. Under the neath. Under the neath? Yeah, fuck it. Under the neath. <laughs> Subscribe. Tell your friends. Tell your enemies. I'll see you for another video very soon. And expect weekly guided practice session to go live Tuesday. Goodbye.